in one minute I'd like you to just open your mouth and declare your expectation tonight you're talking to Jesus hmm. you're talking to the miracle walker you're talking to the helper you're talking to the all-powerful all-knowing you're talking to the one who was is is to come we worship you go ahead declare father lift me in this miracle service change my story when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream someone whose faith is praying someone who believes in jesus is praying someone who knows god is all powerful is praying This is part of the service, you're not wasting your time. Believe me, there is a God that can lead. If God does not lift you, no man can lift you. If God does not heal you, nobody can heal you. If God does not honor you, nobody can honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight I believe will be one of such nights that we will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. I believe in Jesus. I really truly believe in Jesus. And I believe in everything that he represents. I believe he's a miracle worker. He will never call you to waste your time. Now, many of you have cried you have come with hearts open you must believe the Bible says he that cometh unto God must believe Hebrews 11 and 6 that he exists and then that he is the rewarder not of them who are careless around his presence of them that diligently seek him you seek God carelessly, you will not find him. There is a law. Ye shall seek me and only find me when you search for me with all your heart. Please, in one minute, I'd like you to insist. I will never go back the same. Never. Never. Not with this challenge. I will never go back the same. Never go back the same. Never go back the same. How else will the nations know that I met him? I will never go back the same. When Moses encountered him, he did not go back the same. Some of you are in ministry here. Pray, I will never go back the same. That I will contact the grave that will take me to another dimension. Some of you are in business here. I will never be the same. Politicians, career people, family people. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. I had a vision before I left home to come here. And before we sit down, let's just deal with that issue now. I, I saw like lightning. And when I saw it, I saw a spirit coming down. And I saw written on it anger. And the Lord said that this spirit you see has stopped many people from stepping into prophecy and the Lord told me that when I come even before we do any exhortation there is a wicked spirit called anger many of you may not know anger has nothing to do with being good or bad but it is a killer and a closer of open doors this is koinonia in the name of Jesus 
the Son of the Living God. I stretch my hands by the election of grace and I declare everyone here and every family here that has been kept down because of the spirit of anger right now at the count of three in this overflow this main auditorium i want you to bring all of them out all the overflows down to the basement outside from any nation at the count of three in the name of jesus this spirit of anger it must get out of your life right now are you ready one shalakataba two three now out of their life bring them out out of their life every altar sponsoring the spirit of anger to destroy you it has destroyed relationships destroyed opportunity bring them out right now i decree and declare anger be gone you are a spirit 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 Bring them out. Anger. Some of you is, is whole family. Is a spirit. When you are angry, you make dangerous, destiny altering decisions. Be free right now. It has nothing to do with being good or bad, my brothers and my sisters. The Lord brought you here to set you free. Are you just watching or you are praying? Everyone pray. Everything that represents anger in my life, my destiny, I come against it by the blood of the eternal covenant. Many would have been millionaires except that anger stopped them. Many would have risen to great positions. Anger, dangerous spirit. Please pray, this is Koinonia. Now the Lord is that spirit. 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 And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I tell you, there is no power that is not of the Christ that will survive tonight's service. We are still praying. I still declare. Some of you are representing families. The power of God is not just coming on you for yourself. It's coming on you for your entire family. You are being kept down because of the spirit of anger. Again, I declare, in the name of Jesus, anyone here under the captivity of the spirit of anger, be delivered now. 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 For those who are in front here and all and all the overflows i declare for those of you who have come out by the spirit here that spirit hear my voice i speak by the rod of the higher priesthood let them go now leave their families now leave their destinies now leave their families now in the name of jesus please pay attention i'm about to pray a very serious prayer right now for those of you who think never stay in your hands it does not matter what blessing comes there is an evil spirit that takes any good thing from your life any good thing you are connected to people who can lift you you are connected to opportunities that can raise you but nothing seems to stay there is a grace that can bring deliverance from losses listen to me it says and i will restore the years I want to pray don't just come out at random people are coming out by the spirit please this prayer take it serious you've lost opportunities some of you have lost time you've lost resources 
You've raw strategic relationships right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That name that is above every other name. And if God be God in this house tonight, there is no power that has kept you that will survive. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command restoration. Every devil. Help them. Help them. Bring them out. Every spirit that has fallen things from you. Help them, please. My God, my goodness. Restoration. Restoration, restoration, restoration of spiritual fire, restoration of opportunity. restoration for some of you this week will not come to an end you will receive calls that will amaze you i'm speaking to you by the spirit of grace for some of you like samuel you will be told that the donkey that is missing that you have been searching by every human connection has been found by a mystery that only the god of heaven can explain Please don't be distracted. You came for a miracle service. It's not a service to advise you. It's a service to tear down darkness. And everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. The spirit of shame and reproach hear me there is such a thing called shame that everything that brings dishonor and reproach the devil ensures the, that you are there first then it happens can i pray for you are you tired of standing already in the name of jesus the christ of god anyone here under the sound of my voice that there is an embargo of shame and reproach upon your life your family your destiny at the count of three, I want you to shout that name again. And that devil must jump out of your destiny. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. The empathy of shame, shame and reproach. In the name of Jesus. One last prayer and then we'll sit for a while. Do you know that in the realm of the spirit, a man's destiny can be exchanged? Have you read that in your Bible? That when they wanted to kill a king, he sacrificed his own son so that he will live long. There are many people, what you are living is not your destiny. I stand by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus. That exchanges of destiny, that have, that have exchanged a glorious destiny for one that is full of defeat. Right now, at the count of three, may fire from heaven fall upon any altar. One, two, three. Take that grace right now. Take that. Take that. In the mighty name of Jesus, every destiny that has been exchanged, let there be a restoration now. Let there be a restoration now. And Jabez, 
was more honorable than his brethren but that was not his beginning his mother called him Jabez. she bore him in shame can i tell you this please look at me let me tell you something about the grace for honor you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself no nobody can honor himself honor is conferred upon you by another When the grace for honor is not upon a life, everything that is around you is shame and reproach. Hello, give my tongue thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, give my tongue Thy kingdom come. Hello, King Madonna. Thy kingdom come. Hello, There's someone here you lost a loved one last week. Just this week that passed, I know that many people, this is, there's so many people here, but the Lord is ministering to me. I want to pray. There is, we're going to pray uh, corporately against the spirit of death, but there is a particular family I am seeing. This is, it's been circles of death. You lost someone last week now. Is there such a person here? Very quickly, I want to pray for you before we sit. The Lord is just putting it in my heart putting it in my spirit last week just this last week where are you from madam from UK. you came from uk Very welcome. you're welcome god bless you i hope you know that death is a spirit the rider upon the pale horse among the four horsemen in revelations his name is death and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime in subject to bondage the person i'm seeing is wearing a nose mask this is my visions i'm seeing something like that someone wearing a nose mask i'm still going to pray for everyone but this is what i'm seeing My dear, look at me. This lady, where are you coming from? You see what is happening to her? I'm seeing coffins in front of her. I stretch my hands now by the Spirit of the Living God and I decree every covenant I use these people I'm praying for, for everyone here. Any covenant connecting you with the grave. Now, I'm going to pray. Listen, please pay attention. I'm praying for these people, but I want to pray. There are some of you, you dare not go to bed in the night. The only thing you see is dead people calling you. It's the grave. The, there is, the grave is a spirit. As I'm praying for them, I'm praying for you too. Every covenant connecting you to the grave. You don't have to come out, please. You just receive from where you are. I use these ones in front as a point of contact. In the name of Jesus Christ. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? I declare in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Right now, everyone here who is under the call roll of the spirit of death, in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Help her. Be delivered now. Please bring for me the two people now in this main auditorium that will shout under the anointing now. I just saw light on two people. Please bring them. I want to speak to them before we sit. Loud to the hearing of everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ, for all of you who are in front here, I declare by the Spirit of God that everything that connects you to death, 
be delivered now. Everything that connects you to the spirit of death be delivered now. In the name of Jesus, please return to your seat rejoicing. Let me have those that I just called out now and then will be seated. Please be seated in fact. Please be seated. We'll soon do our salutation and welcome, but let's just let's just address this now. Haladusa de Brendeke Parusia da Balakusia. Kraduga Beria Kuskidia Balatusia. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, everything that represents witchcraft in this family be, be healed now and be delivered. Be delivered from everything connected to witchcraft. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the miracle service for the month of July. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just bring her, don't take her back. Just bring her, keep her where she is. I want to lay my hands on her. Yes, it's okay. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil to let you go now and your family be delivered now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We have a lot to do tonight. And it's my intent that God will help us to redeem time as well as achieve so much in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone outside, the overflow outside, will start running. Please ushers, hold the person or anybody. There's someone who will begin to run by the Spirit. Just hold the person. I want to speak to that. Don't bring the person here. Just hold the person there. Outside the overflow in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. The power of God is coming on someone outside. You begin to run right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Help them. Let me speak and declare over that person. Help them, please. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit of God the same way you are running like this. That is how you will step in with speed into the next level of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone outside is going to shout. Now please keep it there, media. Someone outside is going to shout loud under the anointing. Please bring the person to the front of their screen. I want to speak to them. Loud under the anointing. The overflow outside. The power of God is coming upon that person right now. Mighty God. There are things only God can do. Where then is our boasting? Mm -hmm. It is he that has made us able ministers of the new covenant. Just keep her there. In the name of Jesus I declare liberty by the Spirit. Liberty by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. By wisdom, O oh God, Heaven's gates open up with understanding. You order the seasons, creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. Father, may flesh never be glorified. That as much as you continue to use us, may the world know. That we are nothing more than vessels that have been shown mercy. Let me give you an advice. No matter how far God leads you. No matter where God takes you. The higher you rise, the closer your knees should be to the ground. It's an advice by the Spirit. Pride is a killer. It will kill anything. Pride took a man from heaven to earth. It will take a man from earth to anywhere. Pride took a man from heaven or took a spirit, Satan now, Lucifer, from heaven to the earth. It will take anybody from where you are to anywhere. We are only products of God's grace and God's mercy. This is not self-condemnation. We are confident in the sufficiency that came from Him. But we must unashamedly let the nations know 
Because after you see these kinds of things, usually the uploads, Joshua Selman, you see, let me tell you early enough, we are nothing but products of his mercy. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and pour your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and pour your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. That's my testimony. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I am the one yeah. you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. May we get to points in our lives. Where the higher we rise, the more we access deeper levels of this grace, that our hearts will remain ever humble. There's no such thing as we are like that in our family. Then it's an attack. The moment you are grafted into Christ, you are called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Whether you are Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, South South, Spanish anywhere and anyone at all remember what i taught you here that the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I honor and appreciate everyone. People have come from everywhere. We celebrate all who are following from every and any nation. God will continue to draw people to experience that which he has sent us to do for as long as we continue to lift him. The day we take our attention from him and focus on ourselves, then there is no reason why anyone should listen again. Very simple principles, but they control tremendous spiritual power. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Hallelujah. Let me speak for a few minutes on the subject of joy. The glory of God represents the glory of God represents all of the majesty, the splendor, and the possibilities that are captured in God. It's called glory. It comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness. The weightiness is an attempt to describe the vast riches, the vast wealth of a king is called glory and the bible lets us know that there is a relationship between the glory of god and joy now please look up this is a miracle service i want to show you why many people are unable to receive from the spirit the reason is because many do not know or many have not been taught the role that joy plays in the life of a believer hallelujah Let's start tonight with Joel, Joel 1 and verse 12. Joel 1 verse 12. The Bible says, the vine is dried up. Please look up, it's projected. And the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees in the field. How many of you know that men are likened to trees in scripture? He shall be like a tree. So all the trees in the field, no exception, they are withered. Why? Help me. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. That when a believer cannot access joy, it is a very tragic situation that requires 
emergency emergency joy Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19 the prophet although the fig tree shall not blossom he said now this is a chaotic situation this is not a pleasant situation at all although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vine the labor of the olive shall fail the f and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls this is a perfect description of hopelessness he said yet in the midst of it i will rejoice not in myself i will rejoice in the lord and then he says i will joy in the god who is able to save me i will joy in the god of my salvation is the word yehoshua where you get the word joshua god our salvation hallelujah very very powerful the lord is my strength he says and he on account of my joy will make my feet like hind's feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places as a result of joy many believers are taught faith but they are not taught the role that joy has to play can i tell you this the moment the devil wants to destroy an individual and stop you from receiving or walking in the experience of the blessings of God, among the many spirits that he releases to a believer, number one is fear. Fear is a spirit that opens the door for all other spirits to come. And then the spirit of gloominess, sadness, or what we have come to know in our civilization as depression. I tell you by the authority of scripture that depression is not just a medical issue. There is a medical expression of depression. But depression is a spirit. Notice, medically, the character of depression is that it brings you to a place of silence. And the one who keeps quiet in this kingdom is the one who loses. Because the Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Are we still together now? Praise the Lord. Now, please pay attention. There are many legitimate grounds, as we would call it. In 24 hours, there are enough activities to attempt to suck away the joy of an average African, an average Nigerian. All you need to do is put on your television or internet or whatever it is, go to work and you will find more than enough issues. Someone is annoying you before you get to the office. And some of these things are programmed by the devil because he knows the role that joy has to play in receiving. Let me show you a few scriptures, just an exhortation and then we'll pray. Are we together? The Bible says a few things about joy. Number one, Nahum chapter 8 please from verse 10. Nehemiah really, not Nahum, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, the B part. The Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is strength in the spirit. Amazing, amazing. That when God wants to impart strength upon the believer, he gives you joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And in this kingdom, you require strength to pull through the vicissitudes of life, if you lack joy, then you lack strength. The Bible says joy is strength. In Psalm 16 and verse 11, Psalm 16 and verse 11, the Bible says, In your presence, thou wilt show me the path of life in your presence. Now look, look, this. the Bible says in God's own presence is full of joy. Wow. No wonder he is almighty. No wonder there are no impossibilities. Why? Because there is joy. The atmosphere that makes that lives with him. In his presence is fullness of joy. And then at your right hand, there are pleasures. Can you imagine the relationship between joy and pleasure? More joy, more pleasure, less joy, less pleasure. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand, so the Bible tells us that joy is the believer's strength in this kingdom. In Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3, please give it to us, Isaiah chapter 12 
and verse 3. Very, very interesting rendition. He now tells us that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. It is the authorized fetcher that brings out the riches of redemption and makes them accessible to the believer. He says, therefore, with joy, shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Salvation. All of the blessings that came on account of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Christ. Jesus now, he says that you will use joy. So you use joy to draw healing. You use joy to draw restoration. Are we together now? You can stand before a well and yet not have the fetcher that brings water. The well is full of water, ready for your taking. But the fetcher is not there. So joy is not only strength to the believer. Joy is what we do still together. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Let's look at one scripture. I thought this one was really very instructive. First Peter chapter 1, please. We'll start from verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. We're reading to verse 8. First Peter 1, 3. Now watch this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We're reading to 8, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. You who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6. Now watch this. It says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Read verse 8 with me if you are a Christian. Ready? One to read. Whom have not seen, ye love. Uh-huh. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable that brings you glory. You have not seen it manifest yet. You have not seen the manifestation of that prophecy. And yet you are full of joy. You are full of joy. Lord, I give you praise. And they ask you, has the job come? No, not yet. It has not manifested. I've received it. I'm yet to have it. And receiving is enough for me to have that joy. There is a difference between receiving and having. Receiving is spiritual. Having is when it manifests. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, watch this, when ye pray, believe that ye receive. And then if you believe you have received it, then you shall have it. You cannot have what you have not received. The moment you receive by faith, now you begin to express joy. And let me tell you this. You see, this is why the faith life, the carnal, the natural man cannot understand or receive the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. Why begin to rejoice over something that has not manifested? The spiritual fire you desire is yet to come. And yet you rejoice with joy unspeakable, Apostle Peter says, full of glory. Can I tell you to happen in your life? before you have joy. If you want to wait for things to be positive before you have joy, then you are not manifesting the full potential of a Christian. Joy is of the Holy Ghost. You can be happy when you have a salary raise. You can be happy it's of the Spirit. You can sit in the midst of a storm and yet rejoice. Is that true? Joy, three or four loved ones. And you are rejoicing. Lord, I thank you. I rejoice. Many believers walk as if Jesus Christ just died and they announced his funeral. Many people just, you know, they, the way they walk and live gloominess. And when people ask you, you are easy to speak in the flesh. Why wouldn't I, you know, rejoice? I'm, or why wouldn't I be angry? Why wouldn't I be sad? Look what is happening in my life. That's not how we operate in this kingdom. No. You must make up your mind that absolutely nothing will sustain the ability to tamper with your joy. It may touch any other thing, 
but if it does not touch your joy, it didn't really touch anything. Let me repeat myself. No matter what you lose in your life, my brothers and my sisters, people of God, if your joy is still with you, the devil only wasted his time. Mm. It's true. Yet I will rejoice. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I know that many of you have come, thousands and so many thousands others following online, trusting God for all kinds of miracles. And some of you perhaps from the start of the service, you've not even turned to look at your neighbor and say, God bless you. You're just frowning and waiting. And even when the word comes, you can say, what is this thing now? We've had three weeks of teaching. Go straight to the point. Can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? When joy drives in your life, it will affect your health. The Bible says so. It says a merry heart. Is it in your Bible? A merry heart doeth good in the similitude of medicine. When you swallow a tab, you swallow a drug, you are already happy. The drug has not worked yet, you are smiling. Are we together? Because you trust the pharmacist, you trust those who made it that you have not seen. And even though the evidence has not appeared, oh, I'm suffering malaria, or I'm suffering whatever it is, and you take drug or injection or whatever it is, you begin to rejoice. How are you feeling? You have been like that, yet you say better. Is that true? And after two, three days, the manifestation comes. Make up your mind that while I wait, my joy will continue to grow. While I await the manifestation of prophecy, Satan, you will never find me frowning and then to call God unfaithful. Just because tears are coming out of my eyes does not mean I am not joyful. I will cry while joyful. Hmm. Are we together? Make up your mind that nothing will sustain the ability to stop you from sleeping. He is awake, you are awake. Who is Lord? The Bible says the keeper of Israel. The keeper of Israel. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. And if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, and if our God is for us, You see, let me tell you how Satan works. Satan is master of the flesh realm. Don't you go near the flesh realm because it's his domain. Uh-uh. You come there, that is constituency. The moment you are in the flesh. He knows that man, by the fallen nature of, of man, we, we respond to our impulses, our sensory perceptions. The things you hear. The things you see, the things you feel, the things you taste. And so she orchestrates events very intentionally to make God look unfaithful. Just when you are about to sing a song of praise, you hear that the price of things are going up in the market. And then you hear, you hear that other, something is happening. Oh, there is a rumor that they are about to downsize people. Are we together? And then you just take a little nap and you see a grave and cry. Who told you it's your grave? Was your name written there? What if it's the grave of your enemy? And you get up from that experience and you sit down. Lord, are you there? You know some of these things we say, and yet we call what we are saying prayer. That's not prayer. There are conditions for any communication to be called prayer. One, it must be God you are talking to. Two, it must be by faith. If you are talking to yourself, you are not praying. It's a lamentation. And yet the devil sees a few people who rejoice for no reason. Because every time you begin to rejoice, I tell you, your rejoicing and your joy confuses Satan. Because men are not, men are not wired by the fallen nature to rejoice over nothing. 
So he now begins to suspect what is making this person rejoice. I can't see anything physically. And yet you have received so many things. So many things. Make up your mind that I'm going to be joyful for the rest of my life. The end of my faith. I am full of joy. Now we do not negate the realities that are before you. I know it's been 10 years without a child. I don't want to downplay on what people have said around that barrenness. But find joy. You have nothing to lose. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. It says, He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless rejo come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. It says that they that sow in tears, they shall reap. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't rush. It says you will reap in joy. Not with joy. You will reap in joy. You will take the food in the kitchen. That means before you take the food, you must enter the kitchen. You will reap in joy. If you don't enter that realm of joy, there is no harvest. The only possibility that a harvest will come is when you are in joy. The only possibility that I will withdraw or cash this check is when I am in the bank. So I will cash it in the bank. You will reap in joy. So if you are outside of joy, you will be surprised how a harvest of three months will take six years because there is no joy. Are we together now? I don't know if it's still true. I pray it's still true. Africans, they say, are some of the happiest people. Is it still true? Oh, may it remain so in the name of Jesus Christ. Apostle, you don't know what is happening to me as I'm sitting down right now. There is already a letter from my landlord. I'm even afraid of going home. I'm thinking of where I will go after this service. You know how, how short or how long it took God to recreate the earth? That you can be in a service like this, brothers and sisters, and this God, the one I know, I don't know the one you know, but the God that I know, that you are in a service like this, and God begins to move systems and structures, bring helpers to you. If you don't believe this, you are not a Christian. I am telling you. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Here's what the Bible says. Two more scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. Two more scriptures and then we'll begin to pray. John chapter 16 and verse 24. Jesus himself speaking and then he said this. He that told Ye have asked nothing in my name. So we have established the fact that the joy of the Lord can be a reality in your life regardless what is happening around you. But, but, he does not just want you to have joy. You see, anything God gives men, he gives it in abundance. If it's peace, he gives it like a river. Is that true? If it's life, he gives it more abundantly. If it's peace, he gives you the peace that surpasses knowledge. He that told ye have asked nothing. Please look at this scripture. In my name, he says, now ask. Ask. And ye shall receive. Remember what I taught you about receiving? Anything you receive by faith, you will have it for sure. Ask, and ye shall receive. Why? That your joy may be full. Wow. So the reason why he heals is not just for the healing. No. Do you know that the end of most of these things we seek is really joy? Why do you want the child? What do you do with the child? Do you eat the child? Joy. What do you do when the promotion comes? I build a house. Uh -huh. After that, I call people to thank Jesus. After that, what do you do? Joy. The end of many things that we need and we seek. What we really are looking for is not a car. What we really are looking for, I'm telling you this, it's not a house. What you are really looking for is not twins. You think you are looking for twins. What you are really looking for is the fullness of joy. It's only that you have learned either through scripture or sociologically speaking or scientifically speaking from around things. It is joy. Please keep that scripture. Jesus is speaking. He that told, he have asked for nothing. So I know that there is a relationship between the fullness of joy and your receiving certain blessings. 
Why ask God to heal you when you know that one day you will still transit? Everybody Jesus healed in the Bible eventually died. So why did he heal them? Lazarus that he raised from the dead, did he die again? Of course he did. So why did he raise him from the dead? It looks like it's a wasted project. He didn't do it. Because what you are really looking for is joy. It looks like you are looking for promotion. Remember what you've written in your own miracle, your prayer point now. You see how many that our dear brother, he said he wrote so many things. That's because he wants so much joy. So much joy. Listen, you have to understand this so that you can discern the blessings of God. Nothing in itself really blesses you long term. It is the joy that comes out of it. What happens when they tell you someone just bought a great car? You see the person smiling, you are happy with the person too, he enters the car. Then what? Joy. What is the difference between staying in a rented apartment and staying in your own house? It still has rooms. You will say rent. That's the obvious answer, not the right one. The right answer is joy. Now I don't have to pay rent again. What if somebody would pay the rent for you? You would still want to have your own house, even if someone is paying. Okay, I'll take the pressure off you. I will keep paying the rent. Just stay there for as long as you live. You will still want that place. Joy. He said, he that told you have asked for nothing. You've been anointed. Why do you want another anointing again? Why do you want more? Apostle, I prayed for 100 people and only two got healed. So why are you pressing in fasting and prayer? Why do you want a higher dimension of grace? And ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Let me show you one more scripture. Are we still together? Acts chapter 8, please. This was Philip in Samaria. Acts chapter 8, we begin our reading from verse 5. Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. Let's read together. Ready? We'll read to verse 8. One to read. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What did he preach? Christ. Not self. Christ. It matters what you preach if you want to see miracles. You preach self, you will confirm everything by yourself. You preach Christ, he will come to defend and confirm. So before we talk about miracles, we have to examine. Please go back to that scripture. I don't want to just jump it and assume you saw it. Verse 5. Preach Christ. Preach Christ. He went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Next verse. Verse 6. And the people with one accord, they gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing and seeing. My God. That's how you know that God is at work. You will not hear alone. You will both hear and see. If you hear alone, it's not the God of the Bible. It is hearing and seeing. The miracles which he did. Uh -huh, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and were lame were healed. Read verse 8, please. 1, 2, read. That was it. God didn't just want individuals to have joy. He even wants cities to have joy. Talk less families. So a whole family can have joy through the abundance of the things they hear and they see. When you hear that God is moving and you see it in your life. When you hear that God is lifting and you see it in your life. The Bible says there was great joy. There was great joy. That means, if your life is barren of genuine results, what do you think will be affected? Among the many things, you call it your health, but it's not really just your health that was affected. The first thing that was affected was your joy. When your joy is affected, any negative possibility can happen. Your health, a merry heart, do a good like medicine, but a broken spirit can dry up the bones. That means when we experience all the miracles that we're about to experience now and we'll experience after this miracle service, 
among the many things they bring to your life is joy unspeakable full of glory joy unspeakable do not downplay what joy can do joy can give you long life long life long life lord this is what you have done when god blesses you like he did to abraham in genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the Bible says now Abraham was old and well stricken in age and it says the Lord had blessed him in how many things? All things. Not some things. All things. All things. So why are we here? We are here because he called us. And he called us that in union with his word and his spirit he will administer the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. The vaccination against a defeated life. The fullness of joy. That you are happy and rejoicing. Glory be to God. In a few minutes we are going to be celebrating phenomenal miracles here. Many people are going to be delivered. Age long captivity just like that. You know let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace. I have been this, in this business of dispensing the power of God for a very long time and yet I never get tired of the wonder working power of God no episode is ever the same is God not amazing that I'm, I'm here standing I do not even know what is wrong with you but the Spirit of God is moving across the length and the breadth of this auditorium all the overflows outside from nation to nation and in a moment in a twinkling of an eye Burdens lifted, yokes. At most feet, she now chains be broken. Holy Spirit, heaven open. Atmosphere. Please just sit for a few minutes. Let me explain to you something. Nobody really understands the dynamics of the miraculous and the supernatural. But let me attempt to put a few things in perspective and we'll pray. Please look up. You know what a miracle is? A miracle is a supernatural occurrence. It's not a natural occurrence. It happens in this realm. But it is not from this realm. A miracle is a supernatural occurrence. Among the many things that miracles say, miracles reveal the love of Jesus and they also reveal the power of God. Miracles do not operate by the law of nature or the law of science. It is beyond that realm. It is God himself transporting supernatural realities from the realm of the spirit, superimposing those realities into this our three-dimensional plane of existence. What you call a miracle is actually a transportation of spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit. It is only a miracle in this realm. In the realm of the spirit, it is not a miracle. The child you are looking for is the only a miracle to you. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not a miracle. For if it does not exist, it will never manifest. Everything that you look for in Christ the only reason why you can seek it is because it truly exists. It is beyond your horizon, but it is still there. I'm saying this to you so that you don't begin to ask the kind of question that they, they asked in, um, um, was, it, was, it, was it Psalm 78 now and verse 41? I'm not sure if that's the scripture. Let's attempt and see if I got it. Psalm 78 and verse 41. The Bible says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Men can limit God through their beliefs. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, Mary, this is beyond your realm. This is not cooking. This is, this is, this is spirit activity. 
the power of the highest every time the holy ghost is in a place there are no limits to what can happen i'm saying this so that you don't look at what you've written or the medical look at the our dear lady who shared that testimony how in the world do you sit down and someone has damaged kidneys or lungs and all of that and then the power of god it is is that true if a doctor were to carry out a surgical procedure on a, a patient there's no other way they would usually do it except to be able to open the person up and then go to the organs concerned and correct whatever they need to correct but that's not the way it happens in the realm of the spirit when jesus resurrected he did not open a door to enter